to my patterns, I like to use MDF. Um, the reason is, is because it, it's usually flat, so working out thicknesses is fairly easy. Um, it's consistent in its weight, so if I was to make this, and for argument's sake it weighs 2 kilos, um, I'd just multiply the 2 kilos by 3.5, and that's, that's over. Um, and that'll give us the final weight. But basically this is the design um, down this side. These are actually the thicknesses of the MDF board. So 16mm, 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 16 12 Okay. And here I have all my diameters. So basically what I've done is once I have my design and I've thought about how I'm going to feed it, how I'm going to pour it, how I'm going to hold it, I uh, get all these diameters, find the radius, and then I put all these figures into this just scrap piece of aluminium. There's zero, and then we've got 65, 86, 130, 137, and so on. And uh, I use this to mark my work. Pretty simple. Just find center. I'll move around. Then you can get all your angles and get a, get a sharp pencil. And that's how I mark my work, basically. Everything's done on the one piece of aluminium and then you can go to the next one, use whichever one you need. Um, once you mark it all, then you cut it all out. What I have done is I've got a couple of pieces here. I've got to be excited and started to glue them together and machine them up. This is basically, uh, if you look here, you've got the back plate. So it's already got uh, the dish on it. I did what I said I wouldn't do. I actually turned that up in the lathe, the the metal lathe, because my wood lathe isn't big enough. Just a tip on gluing this stuff together. Um, if we were to glue these pieces onto here, uh, ordinary, just get your glue, tip it on, get your brush, spread it out, put this on and clamp it. Okay, a quick tip, if you just do that, it will move because you've got a glue barrier between the two so you'll set that up and you'll think you've got it nice and square all the edges nice and round um, you'll clamp it, it'll move dry and you'll find out that it's probably out by a millimetre or, or whatever um, just a quick tip what I like to do is uh, get a small nail get the size of it get the size of the drill um, Drill some holes. Put the nails in the holes. Okay. Just get the nails so they come through just a little bit. They line up. Right. So you glue it. You put these on. Right. You give them a tap with the hammer. It won't move anywhere now. So you can clamp it and that'll all stay pretty good. Okay, um, and also it cleans up really nice. When you machine it, it fluffs. And um, as we can see here, this is a very rough surface, very rough. All inside here, it's very rough. Um, we need to make that nice and smooth. The way I like to do that is after it's finished, 
I'll give it one coat of shellac. Um, it's a varnish made from beetles. Um, you water it down with methylated spirits. And if you do it quite thin, it'll actually soak in and it'll make all the fluffy bits hard. So once that's dried, then you can sand it. And that's what this bit here, and that's reasonably smooth now. If you just try and, um, like this is just raw, if you just get the sandpaper on this, you're not going to get it smooth. You're not going to get it um, a nice shiny surface like you need. So if we apply the shellac, then we rub it back with a fine sandpaper, say a 120 grit. Um, then once that's uh, all done, then we can go on with a, this is just a wood undercoat sealer. Um, you can just paint it with that and then you give that a rub again with the, say the 120 grit and that's fine and, and that there, that there is, is beautiful and smooth. Beautiful. Don't put any water on this and, and the reason when you use the primer you tend to use a wet and dry to give it a light rub. Um, wet and dry performs better with water but if you put water into this or onto this and you actually rub through to the wood it'll swirl and it will make a nasty mess so don't use water in rubbing back your primer when you rub back your primer you get it all nice and smooth get it nice and even when you've got it the way you want it you can either spray it with a finish coat I tend not to do that what I do is get um, like a, a, a cutting polish for a car, paint cutting polish, and then give it a nice and then buff it up, give it a nice rub, buff it up, and uh, oh, well, that's what that is. Buffed up, just so underneath there, that's this. Once this is cast, then there's some machining I've got to tidy up um, because you can see. The, uh, the bolt, what I'll actually do uh, to make it more authentic is not just have five. If you look at the front wheel of the, the, the A6 or the A5, I think it's got about 16. No, there's more. There's heaps of bolts. I'm not sure how many there is. It could be 16. I think it's 16. Um, so what I'll actually do is I'll actually drill a lot more holes, two in between each of these is five, so I'll get fifteen, and I'll make them smaller so they don't look so it looks more um, like the real thing. But as you can see, this stud pattern distances between these and into there, uh, you can see it needs to make need to make this flat a little bit wider, the diameter along here a little bit wider. And I'll actually machine that out. That's another thing to do with um, the casting process. But just imagine this is in sand, ready for casting. And what we've got is we've got our feeder here and we've got our inlet down the bottom, say on here. Okay. The problem, the problem we've got here is that we've got a thick part which needs feeding in the middle but our feeder has only got on here it's about 20 mils okay, the thickness of one of these 20 mils to feed it so what will happen is is this will get cold this will shut off before this fills okay so what this will tend to do is then shrink on itself you'll pour it this will rise It'll start feeding. Uh, this is bigger than 20 mils. This is, say, 35 mils, probably 40 mils. Um, this will start to shut off. This will go cold, shut off before this is finished filling. So putting the feeder here is useless. Okay, you'd probably have to put this feeder in the middle. So it feeds this area, 
and all the metal will come along here and go up here, along here and down here, and everything should work properly. So if you've got like a bottleneck in between the thick part and your feeder, you're going to have trouble. And that's what I would have here because the angle here and the angle here is the same and it's a 20 mil thickness. What I really need to do is machine this back another 15 to 20 mils. But if I do that, I'm actually creating a bottleneck. So instead of being a 20 mil thickness, I'll have 20 mils, 20 mils, but in the in the side here it'll probably go down to about 15 so that's a bottleneck so what I'll do is I'll cast it and then I'll machine that out later um, that way hopefully everything will fill up properly okay fellas we've got it all finished now didn't come up too bad um, I can't actually show you the casting of this piece because I don't have the uh, kiln made up to melt enough aluminium for it. It's going to take about 10 kilos. So what I will do though, um, I'll go through the process of mixing sand, um, tools, what else? Safety. And then I will actually go through the casting process of making uh, this one, because that's all ready to go. Um, so there's no difference and although I won't actually cast it I'll just get everything ready to the casting point and then you know imagination from there so I've wrapped this up now because it's taken too long thanks for watching hope it helps adios